Hey gang, I am not going to bury the lead. Today on the 78 RPM channel, we are going to play what may be a one of a kind, unique hit of the week record. Hello, and welcome to the 78 RPM channel. Whether you're new to 78s or an advanced collector, this is your source for information, research, and music about 78 RPM records, cylinders, and radio transcriptions. Hey gang, when I started the 78 RPM channel, I was looking forward to days like this. Days when I can share something with you that you are not going to see anywhere else. This is a hit of the week record. It is a cardboard record with a surface made of what's called durium. And the thing about it was, A, it was flexible. So if you dropped it, it did not break. B, because it was pressed kind of like newspaper, it was very inexpensive to produce, thus making it ideal for its time period, which was the Depression era. Now, if you're a record junker, I'm going to give you a little advice on what to do when you find these Hit of the Week records. Number one, you have to realize that, for the most part, these are not expensive records. They don't sell for much. So, in most cases, you're not going to be picking them up and then turning them over for a bunch of money on eBay. What you can do, however, is you can listen to them. Because as far as Depression era music goes, this is a really good representation of what was available. And this was more accessible to many members of the public because these sold for 15 cents at the time, whereas other records were selling for 50 cents or more. So even though they were cheap, they are still really good music to listen to. So if you see these for a buck or so, you should probably pick them up. If, and this is number two, they're in good shape. The durium surface, although shatter resistant, was predominantly due to its cardboard backing not necessarily something that was going to last a super long time. If you flex it too much, it will break. And I would like to point out that this record is already heavily damaged and will not play. That's the only reason I'm using it for a demonstration. Second of all, if you did drop the needle on one of these, because of the soft backing surface, the needle would often go right through it. And unlike a lot of records on shellac, a hit of the week record that has a needle drop will generally not track. The number three thing about these discs is that while I said that they are not generally valuable, there are exceptions, and even some that aren't valuable are kind of fun and you should keep an eye out for them. I'll give you a couple of examples, including this one. This is the first hit of the week record, and you can tell it's the first hit of the week record that was publicly issued because it says demonstration record on it. The first little bit of this record is an explanatory talk about the process of making durium records, pointing out that they will not shatter. And so you have to listen to the little 15 second advertisement before they jump in to tiptoe through the tulips. Another good hit of the week record is this one. It's Ballyhoo by Eddie Cantor. Uh, and as you can see, this one actually has a fancy pants printed label when you compare it to the others. Now this record, it should be noted because it's a Durium Deluxe, this one actually costs 25 cents instead of the usual 15 cents and eventually 20 cents. Uh, but this is a good one because it's got Eddie Cantor on it. Another one to keep your eye out for is this one by the Harlem Hot Chocolates, Sing You Sinners. And the reason you want to keep an eye out for this is because the Harlem Hot Chocolates is actually a pseudonym. The Harlem Hot Chocolates were in fact a Duke Ellington unit. So Ellington and the guys are on this one and they had to use a pseudonym because of course Ellington was under contract by other record labels. But if you find either of the two records by the Harlem Hot Chocolates, pick it up. It's the Duke. The fourth thing I want to mention to you is that there are rare and valuable Hit of the Week records. Bobby Dixon's Broadcasters doing Mysterious Moe's is the cover boy for Hit of the Week. The record was probably never issued to the public, but there were just enough copies that made it out into the hands of collectors to make it extremely desirable and extremely valuable. Having just a few copies out there makes collectors feel like it is attainable. And that is an absolute perfect recipe for a very valuable record. Unfortunately, I don't have a copy of Mysterious Mose, but I do have a copy of this. This is a hit of the week prototype. If you look at Hans Kort's discography of Hit of the Week, he mentions that there are two copies of this record that are known to exist, and this is one of them. I was going to play this disc today, but then I remembered that this disc, this actual copy of this disc, was used to make a, uh, to make a reissue by Archeophone Records. 
and uh, Archaea Phone Records does not mess around. They do absolutely amazing work. If you decide you want to listen to this record, then go on to the Archaea Phone Records website and pick up their reissue of this. They uh, took this copy, uh, they remastered it, they cleaned it up, and they reissued it in their Hit of the Week CD series. I believe it's in Volume 1 of what would eventually become a four-volume series. So I don't want to steal any thunder from uh, Richard and Megan because they do amazing work. So if you want to hear this record, pick up the Archaea Phone record. I don't get a penny from that. They're just cool folks. Okay, so you said you were going to show us something rare. It's not Mysterious Mose, and it's not the prototype of which only two copies are known to exist. What is it? It's this right here. This record is what I believe to be a prototype test pressing that was made by Hit of the Week before they started issuing records to the public. At this point, any good collector is going to look at me and say, well, where's your evidence for that? So I thought I'd share it with you. First of all, and you'll notice I'm now wearing gloves. First of all, this is very clearly a durium disc. It has the same cardboard backing, it has the same durium surface. It is flexible, and there's no way I'm about to bend it to prove it. Second of all, if you look right near the middle, around the spindle hole, you'll see four little dimples or depressions. I don't know what those are for. I think that it was probably part of the prototype process or the testing process where they were using those just to make sure that the durium surface adhered to the paper. But I do know I've seen that in one other place. And that one other place is around the spindle hole of the hit of the week prototype. And finally, lending credence to my idea that this is some sort of developmental prototype or test is the fact that the matrix number on here actually precedes the earliest known durium matrix number by several numbers. I do want to leave you with one final comment before we play this record. If you do find rare records, if you do have rare records, I encourage you to share them with the people online, with the other collectors that you know, because a record that's not listened to is the same as a record that doesn't exist. And I think we need to remember that when we have things that are not accessible to other people. So I'm going to share this record in its entirety. I guarantee you nobody else in the world has a copy, so it's not going to hit a content match. Ladies and gentlemen, the 78 RPM channel presents Von DeLeith and an unknown dance orchestra performing Am I Blue? <laughs>
That is a fun record. And literally, this is the only place in the world you're going to be able to hear it. So thank you for uh, taking a listen. Thank you for stopping by the channel. And uh, I probably won't be able to provide you with one-of-a-kind records every time I put up a video, but I try to provide content for you that's going to be interesting, uh, maybe expose you to some new music, or just talk about things that collectors need to talk about. So uh, join me on the 78 RPM channel. We'll see you next time.